Yeah, we back. We back. Now, today's going to be a different type of video. And I was minding my business, right? And the algorithm came to me. And I seen a video that DJ Academics dropped yesterday entitled Money Man Meets DJ Academics and Breaks Down the Music Business Scientifically. How to Run Up a Bag 101. Now, sometime last week, I dropped a video. Take a look up on the screen. Money Man Cropped Sober. I uploaded my reaction to his latest project, right? And I mentioned. I don't really listen to the new hip hop coming out. I don't really keep up with it, to be honest with you, all right? But when it comes to one artist that I've been rocking with for a very long time, he goes by the name of Money Man, yeah. For a number of years now, at least since at least 2018, 2019, that's really the only rapper in rotation for me inside my vehicle, inside the crib, to be honest with you. That's the only rapper who, when he drops a project, I'm stopping what I'm doing and I'm gonna go check that joint out every single time. And I love it every single time. And I wanna give a shout out to DJ Academics for having his ear to the streets and orchestrating this interview because it's not very often that we get to hear Money Man outside the studio. So not wasting no time. Money Man interview with DJ Academics. Let's get into it. So. Anyway, uh, welcome to the, another episode of Off The Record Podcast, man. I've been, I'm here with someone who I've been trying to lock in with for a while. I would like to uh, describe him as somebody who is a entertainer, but an intellectual in the same breath. Someone who not only is going to make you turn up, but he's also going to turn up your in, uh, uh, intellectual ability by giving you some game. You know what I mean? Everybody who listens to you, I've heard people say they learn about finances from you. They learn about a little bit of law from you. They learn about hustling from you. They learn about really getting their life on track. And I think that's what sets this man apart from most rappers. If you don't know who I'm describing at this point, I'm here with my guy, the one and only, Money Man. Yes, sir. We in here, man. All right, we back. Now, before we get into it, man, I just want to say, I just love to see brothers showing love to each other, man. I just love to see brothers showing love to each other, man. Just And I went on a rant the other day. I uploaded a video where I went on a rant, and I was talking about the lack of love amongst each other, the lack of love amongst black men. But, you know, it's good to see brothers show love to each other, bro. Like, it don't cost nothing to just show love to your brother, man. Just, hey, man, I love what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. I see you. I rock with you. That's what's up. Just a little small shit like that can really go a long way. But anyway, let's get back into it. You know, well, first of all, you're one of the, the first rappers who I saw hop on and kind of, like, promote the crypto wave. Yeah, I was, on crypt I was on crypto, like, eight years ago when you had to meet somebody in the park and then they uh, would... You had to pay them cash. Then they would get on their laptop and send it to your wallet. It, this was when it was really encrypted. Matter of fact, um, only folks on the dark web was using. Oh shit, crypto. Yeah, because I was doing some other shit. Yeah, yeah. And I was, um, I needed. I was like, damn, what the hell is Bitcoin? And the vendor online was like, this is the only way you could pay me. But how did you kind of know that maybe crypto was gonna be so important? I didn't know. Um, I th I was just using it to buy bullshit, like you know the shit yeah. that you crypto was for back then it was sites that would sell you anything you wanted i'm talking about anything i was using it for that but then when it started getting to the legit side i just moved over with it i was like oh damn i had an old laptop it's still an old laptop i had that i threw away because you know I, I, it was a hot laptop and i didn't it was so much crypto on there i never got to recover it i threw it in a dumpster somewhere you know oh shit so it probably got some probably got millions on it Multi-millions. I don't know what happened to it. You know what I'm saying? I throw it away. I ain't want nothing to do hey. with it. Now, in this section of the interview, DJ Academics was asking Money Man about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, all that all that shit, right? Now, for those of y'all who been listening to Money Man, you already know we've been on the crypto way, way, way back. Now, I'm not on crypto no more. I told you, I, I haven't been rocking with crypto for like, uh, I don't know, about a year and a half, two years. Not that I have anything against it. What had happened with me was I was invested in it, but I had to go make a move. My money was looking funny at the time, so I had to cash out. You know, I cashed out while it was at the top, though. Like, if you were somebody that was invested in it a couple years ago, when they made that big run straight to the top before it dipped and crashed again and I was coming back up, yeah, I cashed out at the top. I cashed out at the top. I didn't know it was going to cash out at that level. I thought I didn't know it was going to crash, though. But I needed to go make a move. I needed to dip into some liquid. I needed some liquid cash at the time. So I liquidated all my cryptocurrency, and I never jumped back in. And the main reason why I never jumped back in is because when I look at the numbers now, even though it, it was on the way down from when it was at the pinnacle, 
I remember jumping in when the prices were way lower. Like Ethereum is like what, damn near two thousand dollars. I remember when Ethereum wasn't even like five hundred dollars. So it doesn't even make sense to me really to jump back in at these prices though. So I'm kind of discouraged in that regard. But I don't have anything against crypto. I made a, a nice chunk of change off crypto, just fucking around with it. You know, just messing around with it. So and like like Money Man said, if you a day one Money Man fan, you know he been on the crypto wave. He been giving game on the crypto side of the game for a very long time. For a very long time, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Why you, your favorite rapper was talking about whatever bullshit he was talking about? Money Man was rapping about the goddamn cryptocurrency back in the day, man. So. Yeah, that's why I told you. One, one of the rappers that's always going to be in rotation for me, always in my vehicle, always in my crib. Shout out to Money Man. But the funniest segment of that whole part of the interview was when he said he dumped the damn laptop with millions of dollars worth of crypto on that shit. Now, when he said when he when he got into crypto, when you had to buy shit online with it, that was when crypto was probably like, I mean, Bitcoin, I should say. That was when Bitcoin was probably like less than $100. So now Bitcoin is, I don't know the price of Bitcoin right now, but like like you said, it went up to $50,000, $60,000. That was when I jumped out the game. That was, that was when I jumped out the game, bro. So if you had crypto back in back in those times, and it's a lot of people with those stories, they might have had crypto, they might have had Bitcoin on the wallet, they forgot the password to the wallet, lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, boy, lost millions of dollars, and you're never going to be able to recover. It's just sitting in the goddamn wallet because you forgot the password. Now let's get back into it. So you don't strike me as a person who uh, just, at least coming up, was the guy who's like, yo, listen, man, man, I'm broke, I don't got no money, but I don't know how to get no money. Oh, I, always, I knew how to get money. I came in a rap game with money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never needed. Like, I was good coming in. I came in a rap game. I spent 250 off the rip for promo. I seen that. Yeah, that wasn't nothing. You Why didn't... All right, we back. Now, in that section of the video, Money Man said he came into the rap game. He already had a bag. He already had money when he came into the game. He said when he came into the game, he had, he had spent a quarter million dollars on promo. And with any other business, that's really you got to come into the into the business with money already. You got to come in with some seed capital. You got to come in with some money already to invest to get your foundation solidified, whatever it may be. Right. When that story is common, man, like when someone say I already came into the industry with money. Yeah, you got you got to have some money to get into most industries, to be honest with you. Unless you come in there trying to get a deal, trying to sign a deal, try to have somebody else invest their money into you. You got to come into whatever industry you're trying to attack with a bag of money already. However, you got that money. It's up to you. You're going to work at McDonald's to stack your money. For example, I got a friend of mine who actually lives in Florida right now. Like he got a wife. He got a, a kid down in Florida. He got a crib down in Florida, everything. Right. But I remember years back, like 10 years ago. He was up in New York. He was working at McDonald's, you know, on the graveyard shift, stacking up his money, living in his parents' basement, literally stacking up, doing little jobs here and there, trying to get gigs here and there, stacking his bread, stacking his bread, stacking his bread. And he used that seed capital where he was grinding at McDonald's and then started his own little, you know, photography, videography business. And he's doing his thing. He got a Cadillac down there. He got a house down there. He's doing his thing. He got his family. That's one way. And that's usually how most people get involved in whatever business they're involved in. Right. They got to go grind, make the money, however they make it, whether that's legally or illegally. And after that, you take the capital that you generated. And that's the foundation for whatever business you're trying to get involved in. For example, every business person that I know, they got their money. They got their start in the business by their career. Right. Stacking up their money at their day job, at their career, stacking up their money made off their salary. Then when it was time, once they knew the ins and outs of the industry, they jumped in. You know, they jumped off the porch. They jumped off the ledge and they took a chance on themselves and went the independent route. Or it could be a situation like Donald Trump where the money is inherited from your father or something like that. And that's your seed capital. That's your foundation. But whatever it is, you got to have that seed capital to get involved in any business you're trying to get involved in, any industry you're trying to get involved in, man. I mean, it, you can't get around that. You can't get around that. You're going to have to promote the product. You're going to have to invest in the product. You're going to have to produce the product. And all of that is going to cost some type of it's going to cost some type of price, man. It's going to cost some type of price to produce the product, to sell the product, to move the product, to market and promote the product. You're going to need some money to get to get your feet wet in the game, bro. It doesn't matter what industry you're talking about. Let's continue. Without all of this other like, you know, uh, I want to call it almost expertise and like I think savviness that you have, like you could fucking rap. You know, what I mean, it's, it's not like some shit that you're like just winging it like. Like, I think everybody who listens to your music be like, yeah, this motherfucker can flow, this motherfucker know how to rhyme. Oh, I, I always could rap. I could rap since I was eight years old. I knew I could rap. I knew I could rap anytime I felt like it. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I can go ahead and do whatever. It's just I needed the money, put myself out and market myself the way I wanted to. So I was getting money. It's just I wanted to get enough to rap. So I, if I had 30000 40000 that's not enough. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I started getting booked. Mississippi booked me. Memphis booked me. Arkansas booked me. I was doing shows. I was doing four shows a week like it was water. You get what I'm saying? I'm talking about bringing in all this kind of money. Independently. Four shows a week. Every week. I lived on the road. 
No radio play, no nothing. I just had 10 songs all popping, doing millions of plays on YouTube. Doing, sh I didn't even know what streams was at first. So I didn't even put them on DSPs like Apple, Spotify. You only could get my shit on Spinrella. Boom, Spinrella. Spinrella. Yeah, I'm just putting it out. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Spinrella, all the country towns listening on Spinrella. So my shit just circulating through there and I'm going to do shows. Then I transferred it over to DSPs and companies. My face was so good. I was streaming so much. Big companies will come in. My boy Alex, uh, shout out to him. He'll come give me 500000 and I pay him back 700000 Or he come give me 700000 I pay him back 900000 like it wasn't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah, it was crazy. All right, we back. Now, a lot of people don't understand there's a lot of money to be made in the music industry. It's a lot of money to be made. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the artists aren't really seeing the real money that's being made because they're not coming into the game with, with, back, with a bag of money already. So they got to sign the deal. They got to sign the, the 720 degree, you know, slave deal for 10 albums, uh, you know, with a condition for, you know, five additional albums. So they never get free. They never see a dime of their royalties and their payments and their publishing statements. They never really see any profit made. But if you are truly an, an independent artist that really owns your product, really is doing everything, you know, by yourself, really, you can make an, a decent living making music. I really believe that. I really believe it's a lot of money to be made in the music industry, bro. It's a lot, it's a lot of money to be made. Because as soon as you catch one song, as soon as one song catches heat, immediately your email gonna be bumping, your email gonna be jumping. And even if you're getting booked for not even no crazy amount, say you're getting booked for shows like 10,000 a show, right? And you're doing what, two, two shows, two shows a week, maybe Saturday, Sunday, Friday, or Saturday on the weekend, right? On the weekend, you gotta do like two shows, 10,000 each. Bro, every every weekend, $20,000 in the account? <laughs> come on, man, that shit crazy. Come on, man, $20,000 every Friday, Saturday, come on, man. Listen, it's a lot of money to be made in the music industry if you catch a hot record. Let's continue. Yeah, this was, man, it had to be 2017, 18. Mm, okay. 20, maybe 2018, because I was moving around. And Stunner, we did a deal. Nothing ever came into fruition because I wasn't trying to get under Republic system. Why not? That's too, it's too much for me. It's too much to keep keep up with. I like to keep up with my money. So once it go to Republic, it's a lot of accounting. So when you got to put in, have a lawyer to put in a notice for them to send you your accounting, oh, yeah, that's, that's a right. problem. That's a whole process. But how did you how did you know it was gonna be that way if you never you never signed to a label that big? Yeah. I started reading contracts, mm. even though contracts are hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. Fifty pages. Yeah. There's no way a nigga can. Then addendums and also. Yeah, like, <laughs> like when you gotta have another nigga interpret a contract for you. And yeah. it's English, you don't need to sign that. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If if somebody really fuck with you, they're gonna break that down and bust it down the way you can understand it. You mm. know what I'm saying? But they they interpret it for you like it's another language. Yeah, no, of course. And then the lawyer can get over on you. Shout out to my lawyer. I got a lawyer who's good, man. All right, we back. Now, I know we always talk about how the, the major labels always try to rip off the artists, right? The labels be robbing the artists. But a lot of it comes down to the intelligence levels of the artists, right? You can't really be finessed if you're intelligent. You, you, if you know the game, you can't really be finessed, right? So it really, it really comes down to the lack of knowledge that a lot of artists have, the desperation for fame that a lot of artists have. When you're not desperate for fame, when you're not thirsty for money, you can't really be finessed. A lot of things could be solved by just having the knowledge, man. A lot of y'all boys simply don't have the knowledge. That's why you always hear artists, stories of artists getting ripped off or the contract, I signed a janky contract. But you, did you even read the contract? Did you even understand the business side of the game? You probably thought the whole music industry was get inside the studio, make a hit record, and go home. But nah, it's way more intricate than that. And you got to understand the business side of every industry that you get involved in. Now, let's continue. But um, I sat and thought about it. I'm like, damn, I don't really need Republic to get involved in my dealings. And shout out to Republic. I don't know what they got going on because I never dealt with them. Yeah, but I was like, mother, for reference for anybody who's watching, Republic is the house and the label house to some of the biggest artists in the world, from Post Malone to um, um, The Weeknd, Drake, Nicki. Um, I feel like everybody over there. Is Post Malone over there? Uh, it might be, but... Everybody else is over there. All the biggest artists are over there, which yeah. means you walk into that system, they're, they're going to handle you in the most corporate way possible. There you go. And I didn't feel like dealing with that. When you got to call somebody to call somebody, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. deal with the CEO. So, and then every label was showing interest. Like I flew out, talked to Interscope. They was cool. I talked to Sony. They was cool. Um, probably like 98% of labels hit me up. 
I met Stunner, I was like, okay, Stunner, real nigga. I just chopped it up with him. But we never did nothing major. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it never went to where they was going to put a full scale. They were ready to. They were ready to put a full scale promotions plan and everything. But I caught hard on it. Because I was like, okay, you know how major labels work. They put up a million, you damn near got to pay back eight, nine. So I was like, nah, I don't like that. Yo, ain't that a finesse, man? It's a super finesse. It's the highest loan you can get in history. All right, we back. Now, in that section of the interview, they were talking about these slave contracts in the music business. Now, like I told you, if you're not desperate for fame, you're not desperate for a quick check, you're not going to sign that deal. You're not going to sign that deal. Nobody's forcing you to sign that deal, right? But if you're desperate for a quick check, go ahead and sign that slave contract for 10 albums with an additional five. The choice is yours. And that goes back to what I said about there's a reason why there's so much money to be made in the music business. It's a lot of money to be made because that's really how it goes. These labels invest like a million dollars on like a random upcoming artist and then they hope to get lucky and hopefully that he generates over a hundred million dollars. So when you think about it, the overhead was very small and the return was very large. And a lot of times the label also takes the money made that they make on the road. So even when you go on tour, like I said, if you're doing two shows a week, right, Friday and Saturday, Every weekend you you going on tour. Well, not really on tour, but you're doing shows. You're getting booked for shows and you're getting twenty thousand dollars. Well, if you're assigned to a label, the label gets a cut of that money. So because you wanted to sign that deal, you no longer get to keep all of your show money. So you're not gonna get the twenty thousand dollars. You're gonna get whatever you negotiate with the label. So you might get maybe eleven thousand dollars every week. And that's still fine for most people, right? Eleven thousand dollars every weekend, that's not bad. But you could have kept that whole twenty thousand. You could have kept the whole twenty thousand, but like I said, you signed that deal. So now it's, it's up to you, man. Let's continue. You the type of nigga look like man. We drop you off in sub-Saharan Africa, man. You gonna you you gonna have some type of mansion and and oh, and, I'm gonna doubt and a I whole doubt. goddamn yeah. village out there. Man. <laughs> yeah, I doubt in any environment. Everywhere I go, where, where does that come from? I don't know, man. You, I think you gotta be born with it. You just gotta be born with it. Could you could you work to become a great? Because I I think I don't like just saying hustler for you. Because I just think it's much more than that because it's, it's very intellectual above the neck shit going on too, which a lot of times I think people don't use their brain a lot. People just go do shit. You know what I mean? Do you think someone could work at that type of shit or you really just think it's God gifted type of thing? Now, in that section of the video, DJ Academics asked Money Man, does he think that, I guess, does he believe that intelligence is something that... It's just God gifted or something that you could actually, you know, develop over time or if it's something that you just, you know, you either got it or you don't. Now, when it comes to me, I'm kind of it's, it's a little it's a mix of both. Right. It's a mix of both because you have people who whose intelligence, whose capabilities have been hindered by their environment. They've been dampened by their environment, whether they were born, it put a limit, it put a ceiling on their capabilities and their capacity and how far they could go. But there's also the, you know, like nature versus nurture. There's also the nature side of the game where simply there are certain people who are simply more inclined to deep thinking and introspective thinking and problem solving than other people. It just is what it is. Just like there are more people who are athletic or more people who are creative, more people who are more inclined to math or science or reading or, or the arts or, or athletics. Sometimes it's genetics as well. And usually when you run into people who have high levels of intelligence, it's usually a mix of both, right? Usually they already had a brain that was kind of inclined to high level intelligence, right? Their neurotransmitters, their parietal lobe, their prefrontal cortex was already operating at a very high level. And then they were placed in an opportune environment to where they had the proper education, nutrition, enrichment to bring that capability out of them. So it has to be a mix of both in my opinion, right? You got to be, you know, you got to be born with some of it. Some of it is just naturally God gifted. And then your environment nurtures it and, and waters it like a plant and it blossoms and blooms. Now, let's continue. Everybody been selling their catalogs. You as an artist who has been independent, right? That you own your stuff, right? You own your masters, right? Yeah. What's the thought process behind, like, even hearing about an offer like that? Mm. But me... My music over time, Boss Up and High Field just went gold. Paranoia just went gold. Courtesy about to go gold. 24 is three times platinum. Epidemic, the album is gold. All these are gonna end up being platinum over time. So I want all that money to be coming to me. You know what I'm saying? Now in this section of the interview, they were talking about the latest trend of how a lot of artists and producers and many people in the music industry have actually been selling their catalogs off, right? They've been selling their catalogs off for a lump sum of cash. So instead of maintaining the ownership of their catalog, they decided to sell it off for, you know, $50 million, $100 million, whatever it may be for that lump sum of cash. 
And Money Man said pretty much like, why would I do that? Why would I do that when my music is generating money every single day? It's being streamed every single day. It's going to be streamed, you know, for the rest of eternity. Because I can vouch. I'm listening to Money Man every single goddamn day on my way to work. I'm listening to Money Man at work. I got the headphones in listening to Money Man. I got the AirPods in Money Man. Goddamn, I'm listening to Money Man. On my way from work, I'm, I'm listening to Money Man. At the crib, listening to Money Man. In the shower, I'm listening to Money Man. And man, that's, that's revenue generating, generating, generating. I definitely done put some money in the homie pocket over the years or the goddamn time I played his music. So yeah, you got to maintain the ownership of everything you got, bro. Everything you got. Unless, it, unless you really, like I said, unless your money is funny, unless your money is fucked up, like I told you. When my money was fucked up at the time, I jumped, I dipped into my crypto savings. I liquidated all my cryptocurrency. I had to get my hands on some cash. I needed some liquid cash. I had to make a move. Now, if you're in that situation, I understand. But if you're not in that situation, hold on to everything that you own. Hold on to everything that you own. I'm telling you. Rule of thumb, hold on to everything that you own. Let's good see. Um, you know, I'm notorious for pocket watching. I'm a pocket watching. Kid. I know. I love it. <laughs> Have you made more money? In music or outside of music? Music. I, music make music really? make a lot of money for me. Because I put out a lot of music and my music streams for years. My old catalog still streams. Boss up, loyalty, how I feel. They all stream. And no you, radio play. You getting paid off them joints too, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, I'm only asking because most majority of rappers don't get paid off that music. Yeah, I get music. paid off my music. Mm. I, I I got a high recruitment rate. Mm. And this is low low upfront cost. I'ma stream organically. All right, we back. Now, in that section of the video, Money Man was talking about his low overhead versus his high profit margins. And I think any business owner, anybody who is engaged in business, that is really the ideal situation to be in. You really want to be in a place where it costs you. It doesn't cost you that much money to operate your business, to make sure you have your daily operations moving in order to make a profit. Right. So if you had to spend one dollar to make 500, that's usually the best situation to be. Right. And if you're an independent artist with an active fan base, it's really, it doesn't really cost you much to set up a studio inside the crib. It doesn't cost much to record the music. It doesn't cost much to package and upload the music, right? I think to make, to really make like a mixtape, record it, you know, mix it, get a little, you know, artwork, put it out on the, on the platforms. It doesn't even cost, it doesn't even really cost like a thousand dollars, to be honest, to make like a whole project. If you got the whole setup at the house, if you got your in, your in studio at the house, you got your home studio, you got everything moving at the house, you could mix and, and record yourself. You're really going to have a very low overhead and then you're going to have a very high profit margin because the music never stops streaming, especially if you have an active fan base. And even using me on YouTube, for example, I've only been on YouTube for about a year. But let's say my joint starts really blowing up. I get like a million subscribers, or hundreds, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I really have a very low overhead because I don't run a YouTube channel where I have a big production or I got like a big camera crew. Or I got somebody following me around or I'm paying an assistant or an editor. Or, like I could pretty much do everything by myself, bro. I could do everything by myself. My commentary is all original. I grab the microphone. I hop on the microphone. I put out the video. I don't got to go through a whole big, you know, I don't got to go do vlogs. Like I don't got to go film stuff out in the public. It's very easy to produce content and it doesn't cost me anything to distribute the content. And because everything is all organic, right? Because everything is just building up organically simply by having a good product. Really what you need to have, what you need to focus the most on is having a good product or service or whatever you bring into the market. Make sure whatever you bring into the market is simply a good product. You don't understand how far that could go by simply having a good product, man. Just have a good product. Don't have a janky product. Have a superior product that you're putting out onto the market. And organically, people will come. People will rock with you. People will become a fan. People will become a paying customer because you have a good product. You have an amazing product. People should focus on having an amazing product, man. I guarantee the money going to come. The fame going to come. The, everything is going to come. The fan base going to come. The support going to come. The love going to come. The sponsorships and the, and the deals. And, the, and everything is going to come, man. I promise you. Now, let's continue. How much we spending on that? How much we spending on that? You know what I'm saying? It's only a few things you can spend on these days. Well, well, well all right, I'll give a scenario. So uh, art, let's say an artist signs to a 16% royalty rate deal. That's where you fucked up okay. at it anyway. Well, 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 but well, you know, if you from the hood and you trying to get out, you got ops, you know, you could die tomorrow. You need to sign that quick deal to get yourself up out of there. You can't knock nobody. Mm -hmm. Now, in that part of the interview, Money Man actually brings up a scenario where signing a deal with a major label could be beneficial to the person who decides to sign that deal. Now it goes back to what I said before. You got to be someone who's desperate for cash or desperate for fame for it to make sense, right? So he, he gave a scenario where somebody would be desperate for a deal, desperate for a change of scenery, because like he said, his life is in danger, his money fucked up, you know, the ops is chasing him, he about to die, he could die tomorrow. Listen, if you are in a situation where you could die tomorrow, okay, go ahead and sign the deal, man. You know what I'm saying? Go, go ahead and sign the deal, bro. Go ahead and sign the deal. But 
logically the best situation to be in is really to be in a position of independence and ownership and not in a position of desperation and weakness because any decision you make in desperation and weakness i guarantee you're going to come back later on and complain about it you're going to be crying about it you're going to be bitching and moaning about it so it's best to be in a position where you're not you know your back is against the wall really because you're never going to make solid and sound business decisions if your back is against the wall you're always going to take something that's going to help you in the moment but later on down the line you're going to regret that you made that decision that's just me though that's just me but anyway shout out to money man shout out to dj academics interview was cool i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna play the whole video i'm not gonna react to the entire interview it was over an hour long go check it out your goddamn self but it was solid man shout out to dj academics one of the few people to get money man for a sit down we don't get that very often we don't get that very often we got an hour long worth of content that's what's up man shout out to dj academics man shout out to dj academics big up to money man man anyway it's your boy never called that's Celine back in the building yes indeed cash app up on the screen and i'm gone peace reincarnated i'm back in original fashion i left on a horse and came back in that ass and i left with abundance and came back to famine we used to be pyramids now we be rapping look how the mighty have fallen used to be running now we be walking when you be cooning that's when they applauded selling your soul your sons and your daughter gotta come up in this shoot they stuck in the mix really my heart it be breaking that's why i'm stacking that paper and handle my business pass it down in generation talking about money and power and building a nation that's a deadly combination never be watching the tv they pushing the genus falsifying information know they got malice intentions step in the room and i'm feeling the tension enemy watching me blocking my vision pay for the check cause i need my redemption building my kingdom i need to protect it ready for war like a young money congo never decided the team is the motto up in the crib and i'm whipping up waffles up in the crib and i'm smoking gelato i'm chilling i'm taking my pain and make it ambition i'm blessed by the gods but i ain't religious i came for the power they came for the bitch they making no hourly wage i got business this shit is an art and they can never be taught selling my soul i can never be bought play all my money i see you ain't caught run to the check and i do it for sport babylon falling i go to the source packing my luggage and go overseas shorty be with me and she so at least shorty be chugged and i'm calling her hershey secret intelligence probably gonna murder me don't fuck with brands cause nigga i'm haitian say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces